Uh, I don't remember any worry being built, but I was used to repair them. Oh. Mm. And when I was 15, down at the worry yard, right down in Colchester, Ank Street, we sometimes had six worries all pulled out at once, mm -hmm. on slipways. And uh, all those, uh, you can say nearly a dozen men worked there. Painters and mm -hmm. boat builders and what not. And, uh, Ben Hur the blacksmith was always down there relearning the ironwork. Mm -hmm. And that reminds me, ironwork on a wherry, a terrific amount of ironwork, the winch and all the bin, bin irons all around the gunnels, a lot of ironwork. And it, at it, his time of day, he did it all for £30. <laughs> oh, yeah. £30, that cost a thousand, no one. It certainly would, yeah. yeah. I would. Yeah. yeah, to make a winch, iron winch, to heave up the sail, mm. everything like that. Mm. But uh, they used to come up and we used to repaint them, have them out for two or three weeks, pitch the bottom, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, paint up, and they were all colours. And uh, I, being a boy, I sometimes had to make up a, a stone of paint. Not just pounds, but stone, sometimes two stone. A red colour, yellow colour, <laughs> blue, and they used to make them out of powder. And uh, we had a big stone in the paint shop, big stone, with a basin like middle. And I used to put the red powder in, and put the linseed oil in, and we had a palette knife about that length about two inches wide and we used to start like that you know mixing yes. till you got a, a liquid we used to add some dryers what they call special dryers and <coughs> uh, we used to scoop it up wipe it in the in the big pot you see mm -hmm. and then where some of them hatches the whole lot was red and the, the battens were blue so you tell there was a lot, lot of paint. Yeah. Then there was all um, the white paint on them. All the masthead was white, and some were picked out in patterns. What the each uh, We we made all the colours, and we then we used to paint these patterns. You see, like on the half cap. No, a, a wearman was like a gypsy waterman. What we busy. And he fancied all the colours on the cab, you see. You might have a blue paddle with a yellow edging and sculpt to each corner on each side of the doorway and then on the door. And we used to paint them all in and then when they dried we used to varnish the lot so the sun protect against the sun the weather and war, you see. Varnish it all. Did they change the design? That, or? They looked beautiful when they were mm. done. They looked gorgeous. A, a mm. fresh paint and wear it done with it. Mm. It was a lovely sight. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Can you remember the names of the wearers? Well, that's funny. The one I remember most was Lord Roberts, the one that now yeah. got up. That used to carry 40 ton. What the, sort of things? The was Lord that? Roberts. What sort of things was it? 40 carrying? ton of corn. Oh, yes or coal, whatever you like. They, they were open to anything, wasn't yeah. they? Coal, uh, malt, uh, sacks of corn, and they used to carry 16 stone on the back, on a plank, from the shore across onto the wherry. 16 stone, they, they were stacks at, sacks at high, wasn't they? Mm. Marvellous. A killer man, no one. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose they just had the technique of, of lifting it, didn't they? Yeah, the one held the other one on, mm -hmm. so that was on his shoulders. Mm -hmm. And he just crouched along the plank, the plank bent like that, and he just threw it in the hole. What did they put on the sails? Did they tar the sails or um, put something on the sails? I don't actually know. That was done at Yarmouth. Oh. A special firm down at Yarmouth used to do the sails. That was a mixture of tar oil 
Hmm. Uh, just that dried, but that was still pliable and weatherproof. Yes. That was uh, an art, that was, because they had it on the South Thines. The South Thines at Yarmouth was all mm. open. They used to dry the nets on there, do not they? They used to do sail, wherry sails as well, and dry them. And uh, that was an art on its own. They were generally black. Mm. And that, oh, they hurt your hands when you pulled them. Did you ever sail on a wherry yourself? I would say, yeah, I went on, uh, you know, just a trip, not to work mm. on them. Yeah. yeah. Just a trip. I was on when uh, Barton Regatta once, when one old wherry sailed too close to the other, mm. and he's, the end of the gaft picked up the other one's line, what run yeah. across the sail, and that went further and further and stretched out to it. And you won't hurt the lane if there was there. <laughs> There's an old man I, I should go and see Sunday. <clears throat> he was, uh, he used to go with his father in the Gleaner, a wherry called a Gleaner. And that wherry, we had that at Coltshire years ago, 50, 55 years ago, because I'm 75, and I'd be about 15. We had that down there, and a chap from London, Kensington Museum, came to see him. He wanted him to tell him every little detail on that worry, mm -hmm. what it was for, mm -hmm. and what it did, everything. Well, old Jack Gage, <coughs> he had a fortnight with this bloke, and he done all right. Jack said he'd give me a five. Well, a five was a lot of money then. And, uh, that originated that in time there's a whole design in the uh, Wherries and Waterways, that book. Yeah, I know. There's a whole design that length and that's the Gleaner oh. and every little thing in, mm -hmm. in it. Mm -hmm. And what it was for and the, the model is in the Kensington Museum. Oh, goodness. And that's how that turned out. Mm -hmm. So they always got uh, details of where it whatever happened. Mm. Yeah. Did you have anything to do with the olive? The, the olive? Did you have anything to do with I that? I did one? the olive all, yeah. Yes, you did. Peter Peter Bauer bought the olive as a wreck. Mm. And he heard about me through Landamore's, Leslie Landmore. He said he's just retiring, he said you what get him and he'll come and help you. Well, when I went and looked at the olive, I said, yes, I'll come for, you know, one day a week. When I saw I wished I'd uh, <laughs> held my own. That was just, uh, they'd stripped at someone, and then they got something so was too much, you see. Yes. Anyhow, we sorted it out, and Peter's father drew out a design of what he thought in like, you know, and so it should be. And they got me a load of half inch ploy and whatnot. Off I go. I made the. There used to be a big cabin forward just after the mast originally, with a bunk each side and a bunk each side. Well, there's a skylight in the middle, so I put a partition each side of the skylight and I made a cabin each side and one across the end was a double bunk. And then we <coughs> actually got right through in, you know, renovating it. I scraped it all off in the saloon, that was all built from mahogany, yeah, lovely. lovely mahogany mm -hmm. panels. I scraped that right down to bare wood and got it up blood red. And that, that is a showpiece now. Mm -hmm. And he take on parties, you know, mm -hmm. 12 or something like that. And he done pretty well. Mm. 